For as long as mankind has grappled with the big questions in life, we have faced a unique mystery, the mystery of music. How does it affect us? We speak of this music being serene or that music being joyful or sad, but what does that even mean? What does it mean for music to be emotional? Most of the mystery comes from the fact that musical emotions don't fit the pattern we know from our normal emotions. Suppose a man builds a successful business and feels happy and proud. That makes sense. We know the reason. We know why he feels what he feels. Or suppose a person loses a loved one and feels profound sadness and grief. Again, it is pretty obvious why the person feels what they feel. We understand it. In the case of normal emotions, we react to some boost or some hit to something we care about. We respond to the benefit or harm to some value in the world. But take the case of musical emotion. Hear the overture to The Marriage of Figaro. Feel its joy and ask yourself, why do I feel joyful? The only answer is, the music made me feel it. Or listen to Chopin's Funeral March and ask yourself where the feeling of solemn grief comes from. The only answer is, it comes from the music. Music doesn't give you a successful business or cause the death of any of your loved ones. It doesn't change any of your values in the world. So how on earth can it cause emotions, which are value experiences? Thinkers have struggled with this question for centuries. René Descartes attempted to make emotion into something scientifically understood in a treatise on the passions of the soul. Quote, Sometimes the heart was entered by an alien juice, that was not fit for maintaining the heat or could even have extinguished it, and this caused the spirits rising from the heart to the brain to arouse the passion of hatred in the soul." End quote. This is a mixture of biological ideas, like the heart and the fluids pumping through the body, with mystical poetry painting a physical picture that Descartes invented with his imagination. As you can tell, this really started to make the subject look absurd. Intellectuals such as Immanuel Kant and Edward Hanslick concluded that the idea of emotion, particularly in music, is not actually a legitimate notion after all. It's sort of a folksy idea that doesn't hold up to logical scrutiny. It basically has to be thrown out as an old wives' tale that has been debunked. If they were around today, they might be on Penn & Teller calling B.S. Academia today takes it as axiomatic that music is pure form. This formalistic idea is exactly what was put forth by thinkers like Kant and Hanslick. Treating music as emotional is not only ignored, rejected, and scorned today, it is simply laughed at. The very subject is verboten, forbidden. Some thinkers following these formalist uh, philosophers deliberately tried to save the idea of musical emotion. They strained to construct some link between the experience of hearing tones and the feeling that you have about the world. They looked to associations or analogies we can form. They tried to argue that music represents or depicts the world in the way that a painting does, which is plain nonsense and certainly has not helped the notion of musical emotion gain any credibility. This is not purely an issue for the scientific laboratory. Even scientists need a framework for guiding experimentation and for interpreting the results. I have a new answer to this problem. I'll be presenting it in a new book and a new course called Emotion in Life and Music. I'll tell you the heart of my answer now as a teaser for the course. Ordinary emotions and musical ones are different in many ways, most especially because of the cause, as we've seen. But they are similar as a matter of conscious experience. We can identify what is held in common between ordinary emotions and musically aroused ones. When we are excited and happy, the mind races. But when we are dejected and sad, the mind drags. There is a certain pace to mental action, a certain speed, which is a distinguishing factor of an emotion. When we feel serene, it is a gentle and mild emotion. When we feel enraged, it is a vigorously powerful emotion there is a certain characteristic level of intensity to each emotion. Furthermore, if we compare, for instance, rapture and anguish, we can distinguish that although they are the same in many respects, they differ with regard to affect. 
They are both relatively slow and very intense, but rapture is pleasurable while anguish is painful. This dimension of affect, of psychological pleasure or pain, is a third parameter. The set of quantifiable aspects of mental action of an emotion is what I call the psychological signature of that emotion. Each emotion has a unique signature, but that signature is the same between musical joy and ordinary joy, between musical sadness and ordinary sadness. This is the essence and heart of my new theory of music. I've been developing it for more than 15 years, and I am finally ready to start giving the full public presentation. Please join me for my new course and my new book, which will introduce this theory and elaborate it.